on average. Maybe it dropped one, maybe it dropped two, maybe it dropped three, but it probably didn't drop all four of those oxygens. The affinity changed, and it was easier to let go of oxygens in that low environment, that low oxygen environment. But there's still a little bit more oxygen in that hemoglobin molecule, in that hemoglobin protein. You with me? Now, this is the really magical part. All right? There's an effect called the Bohr effect. And the Bohr effect isn't boring, but it's, it's called the Bohr effect because that was the name of the scientist who discovered it, and it's phenomenal. All right? What happens in the Bohr effect? All right? Oh, that's don't. Sorry. That's not what I wanted. Oh, my God. Too many, too many lines here. I'm going to tell you in words, then I'm going to tell you on the graph. All right? Yes? So, with the iron attaching to the O2 and then releasing O2, both, both grabbing it and, and releasing, it, uh -huh. releasing it in both cooperativity? So, one is what we can think of as positive cooperativity, where it's grabbing it, and the other is negative cooperativity, where it's getting rid of it. Okay? Now, getting rid of it, it doesn't get rid of all of it. And that's kind of good. Because we don't want it all, all dumping in one tissue. We want it to kind of go through the body, right? We want to have it sort of distribute that out as, as necessary. And that's sort of the reason that it doesn't just drop it all at once like it grabs it all at once. Okay? Now, let's think about what happens. Let's say that I am out for my morning jog, as I was this morning in the rain, and I am exercising. When I am exercising, my muscle cells are doing work, and when they're doing work, they are generating protons. Exercising cells generate protons. Remember, the buffer is necessary to kind of keep that from changing too much. But right at the place where they're released, there's an increased concentration of protons. What we discover is if we take hemoglobin and we measure how much oxygen it contains, and we uh, do a binding curve. So here's where we were uh, to start with. We, we said, OK, here's hemoglobin. Here's the pH of the body, about 7.4. So you look at this sort of green line. And there's where the, the, the uh, amount of oxygen contained in the hemoglobin is found. We go up near 100% in the lungs. We come down here, way down to zero down here. So again, uh, about the, the uh, concentration that we want to um, uh, dump it off the tissues is down, back down around here. Now. If the hemoglobin encounters a place where muscles are actively exercising, they encounter increased numbers of protons. What this graph tells us is that when hemoglobin encounters protons, it tends to lose more oxygen. This is why we're alive. This is why we are able to use our muscles and have oxygen when we need it. Because our muscles are sending out a little signal that says, I'm exercising. I'm going to need some oxygen. You had better give me some oxygen. Because if you do that, then I will be able to do my thing. The protons are a signal for that. So protons cause hemoglobin to lose more oxygen and give it to the tissues that need it. Okay, That's a very cool phenomenon. It's called the Bohr effect. So if we decrease the pH, what we see is this line moves further and further to the right, which means less and less affinity for oxygen, which means more and more oxygen gets dumped into the tissues that need it. Does that make sense? That is the Bohr effect. You might wonder why the Bohr effect happens. And it happens because of these protons are binding to things inside of hemoglobin and changing its structure. Now you see. Charge is changing structure. And now this is helping the cell to get more oxygen where it needs it. Question? OK. That's what the protons are doing. Now, in addition to that, and by the way, the protons are binding to histidines. That's where they are binding inside of this uh, hemoglobin. They're binding to histidines. They're causing histidine to get a positive charge. That positive charge changes the shape of the protein that favors the release of oxygen. And more oxygen is released where, cell, where, where our body is exercising. Another thing that that positive charge does is it causes carbon dioxide to grab a hold right there where that proton is. So this is how hemoglobin picks up carbon dioxide 
out of the bloodstream. The actively respiring cells are not only making protons, they're also releasing carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a poison. You want to get rid of it. You want to get it out of there. Hemoglobin grabs that carbon dioxide as a result of those protons being on it. And now it takes it back to the lungs. Takes it back to the lungs. When it gets back to the lungs, the reverse of this process happens. Instead of grabbing carbon dioxide, hemoglobin lets go of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, we exhale. Oxygen comes in and we start the process all over again. That's what's happening in respiration in our bloodstream as we're breathing. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I didn't get the chance to finish that. I will finish that tomorrow. There's even more fascinating things about hemoglobin. I know you're dying to hear them, and I will tell them to you tomorrow. how far it'll go. I'll announce that next week sometime. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Sure. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if the, um, the sort of the, Go ahead. Some of the toxic effects of metal, heavy metals like lead, uh, mercury, or yep. lead and mercury is, is it related to the, the coordinating effect of ions? Not so much the coordinating effect. They'll actually, in some cases, from covalent bonds mm -hmm. and actually that by their virtue of their being there will cause the structural changes that cause deadly problems. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So the more affecting everything is, in effect, due to physical uh, changing, like physical structure changing because of amino acids being formed. Absolutely. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, is, that I little just... tiny thing, it has no effect on myoglobin because myoglobin doesn't interact with other subunits. So myoglobin is the one that does not shift, and hemoglobin is the one that shifts. Right. Because myoglobin only has one subunit, there's nothing for it to interact with. In hemoglobin, that change is communicated to the next subunit, which is what causes the next subunit to want to bind oxygen more. Pretty cool. Yes, ma'am. Um, when the myoglobin, um, when does that release the oxygen, and when is that going to stop? Right. The hemoglobin right. So once it's left the tissues, again, it's getting out there where it's much more likely it's going to let it go than it is going to be to grab it. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs>